Good morning and welcome to a look at the Facebook Pixel and how it can help you to select a better customer that better matches the needs of your business and of course the needs of that particular person who's trying to connect with your business as well. My name is Dante St. James. We'll be watching this on Zoom live. So if you're live in the room now and there's a few of you I can see, uh, you can just uh, enter any questions in the Q&A or in the chat feature in there. If you're watching on YouTube, just put your comments down below. Um, that's the people who are watching the recording afterwards on YouTube and we'll be able to come back and answer those questions within about 20 four hours of you posting those in. I do try and keep an eye on those as much as I possibly can. Until then, let's share the screen and get started. Off we go. So I'm just going to turn off my video so it doesn't create that sort of ugly layout on the Zoom layout because it often can look really, really good. What we're going to do is look at finding customers through the use of the Facebook pixel. Now, what we're going to be covering off is, I guess, um, a bit about what the Pixel is, which is really, really helpful, as well as how it gets installed and how you can use it to gather the kind of data you're looking to get to be able to better target ads and find out better about who your customers are. My name is Dante St. James. I'm a community trainer for Facebook Australia and New Zealand, as well as the Blueprint Lead Trainer uh, for Facebook within Australia as well. I've got lots of certifications through Facebook and I work very closely with the ASBAS Digital Solutions Program as well, which is all about, I guess, making sure that small businesses within Australia can get the support they need with digital products. It's brought to you by Business Station and the Australian Small Business Advisory Services Digital Solutions Program from the Australian Government, working in conjunction with Business Station specifically in Western Australia, Regional Development Australia Brisbane in Queensland and Treaty Business Consulting in the Northern Territory. What we're going to cover today is how the Facebook pixel helps to build stronger campaigns. So in your ads manager, how to implement and then use the pixel, which is probably really important if you haven't really been able to do much of that. And some of the best practices for using the pixel and extracting data from it. So first of all, let's take a look at what the Facebook pixel actually is. It's a small piece of code that you add to your website that lets you access some of Facebook's most affecting, effective advertising features. So it goes way beyond just simply you know, understanding you know, what targeting is for people by their age groups, the demographics, where they're located, what their interests are, and actually helps you identify those customers who are most likely to do something with you again, or even for the first time, based upon the actions they've had on things like your website. Now to better understand how the pixel works, we're going to use a, a fictional business that we've called Lelure. Now Lelure is um, all about um, like different makeup and cosmetics. So they decide which actions they care about um, and they set up the Facebook pixel to pretty much fire off every time a person takes a specific action on their website. So a person visits the Lulu website, that sets off an action and that action registers when this person takes that action on the Lulu website. So it doesn't matter whether it's on the, um, the mobile version or on the, the desktop version, it still works for both of them. Now the pixel helps match that action with a Facebook profile. So if that person who's on your website makes that action, then it goes and looks at that and goes, oh, I know who you are. You're one of our people on Facebook. We, we now know, you know the kind of demographic you are and we, we're able to match that with certain actions. And then the hopeful part of that is that you can then retarget that person with a very specific ad for their intention that they showed on your website, the product that they want to look at on your website and any sort of you know extra things we can go for that, that makes it much easier for you to identify how to get your message in front of the most valuable people in you know, without having to go through all these horrible, horrible steps of having to learn and relearn and guess and, and pretend and practice and, and, and test and iterate and all that. Now, Lelure can use this information just like you can for targeting. They can use it for optimization of their campaigns and they can use it for measurement as well, of how well their ad campaigns are going. So what makes the pixel pretty valuable for everybody who's using it is that 
it helps you to reach the people most likely to take action. And that's what you really want to. You don't want to have to be wasting thousands of dollars trying to reach people who have absolutely zero interest in anything you do. If you can find out, for instance, that people have been to your website before and they've got an interest in a particular product that you have, wouldn't it be great to be able to target those people with an ad that was specifically calling them out on that interest and saying, hey, we know you're interested. Here's the next thing you could do. I could offer you a, a discount or we could offer some kind of incentive to get you to go to that next step. So you reach the most relevant people by building an audience that's based on the actions that people are taking on your website using rules like time spent on your website, something like the frequency, the amount of times they come back to your website, as well as something to do with pages viewed. So if they view, they, view, they view specific pages on your website, we can see that as well. We can also use it to optimize campaigns for results along the sales funnel. So we can look at people who are at the very top of the sales funnel who may be, you know, just vaguely sort of interested. They're not really at that purchase point yet. They're not usually at that place where they're ready to go, yes, I'm gonna spend the money, um, you know, let me spend that money now, please, because I'm really, 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 really wanting to do it. Or it can be at the middle of the funnel where they're curious, where they're actually, their, their curiosity is peaked to the point where they go, hmm, I want to know more about this product. And also down at the bottom of the funnel where they got really hot to trot. They're really, really wanting to buy a product and they're in that final stages and making the decision about their purchases. Wouldn't it be great if you could put an ad in front of them while they're on Facebook or Instagram that actually helps to push them across the line to actually get that product for you. So that kind of stuff, those high value conversion events like adding to cart or completing a sale are things that you can track right along that sales funnel. And then also it looks at um, measuring and getting insights into understanding how your customers are going to behave. And it helps you learn more about that over the time. So you start to think, hey, I'm really starting to notice that people who we follow through in this pixel program, where they, you know, we can see where they're going, how they came into the site, we can see their behaviors and, and what kind of people they are. Well, we can optimize our ads to better suit those people and go rather than sort of going out blind, use that to teach us what is the best kind of approach to take. So let's take a bit of a deep dive into this. You can use the Facebook pixel to help you to reach the people who are most likely to be interested in your products or services. And by doing that, you're setting up custom audiences and lookalike audiences. Uh, hopefully some of you have used those before. And if you've got any sort of examples of where you've used this before, feel free to put it in the chat window or in the comments in the below in YouTube as well, because it'd be really good to sort of look at some of those and, and perhaps draw out your experiences as well of how you've gone with custom audiences and lookalike audiences. I'm a big fan of lookalike audiences. I won't lie. They're really, really good because I think they help you to reach a lot more people outside your normal customer base. Now, custom audiences in the pixel, they work together to help you to identify who is taking specific actions on your website. So that's when you're looking at custom audiences that, for instance, um, are, are, are a collection of people who are you know, visiting a certain page on your website or taking a specific action on your website. And it helps you then to say, well, if they've done that action, I want to send them a new ad that specifically targets the next step that we want them to take in the journey towards buying from us. And you can use that information to create a lookalike audience then. So if you know that these people are really good, then they're gonna have a lot in common with other people who may be interested in your product, but haven't actually discovered you yet. So you can say that, okay, these people are the people who are the most interested and valuable, Go Facebook and find me more of those people and then bring them into my program so that I can then introduce this product, which I really believe they're going to like. And that's how you then reach well beyond the people who've just visited your website or taken actions on things like, you know, video views on your Facebook page or video views on your Instagram profile. Those lookalike audiences are people who are similar in many, many ways to the highest value customers you've got. Those are the ones who've already taken actions on your website. So how does the pixel help you to optimize those campaigns? When a customer comes into your website, they're leaving little clues based upon the actions they take. And if you have the pixel installed, you'll be able to turn signals of their intentions when they're coming into your site into what we call conversions. 
So those intentions could be uh, an intention to add something to a shopping cart, um, an intention to make a purchase, an intention to just browse, or an intention to look for more information on a specific product as well. And we can take those signals and then say, hmm, let's draw those into conversion. So you can see on there, they come in um, at what we call the mid funnel, which is uh, they, they, they know who you are, they know where you're at, and they are interested and they're looking to find out more. So they come into there for the visits, now that we've got people who are showing a lower funnel intent, which is they're closer and closer to that final conversion point where they buy from you, they're the people who take very specific action. So whereas initial visitors may just look, view the product details, do a bit of research, maybe sign up for your email list, something like that. The really high intention people at the lower funnel are people who do things like adding items to a shopping cart, but not actually going through and completing the purchase or people who start to complete the purchase. So they've actually clicked on going to the cart to check out. So those are the kind of people we can go, if they abandon that journey, because life happens, people get busy, kids start screaming, the kettle boils, the phone rings, you get a message from an app or you get some kind of notification, then you'll go, oh, I, I, I need to come back later and you've forgotten what you were doing. And you either don't start that, that you don't pick up from where you left off because the cart might have timed out in 15 minutes, or you completely forget what you were doing and you never go back to that again. People sometimes shop and step away from shopping in a bit of a autopilot way. I know I certainly do it when I'm shopping online. There's so many things I add to cart and then I'm getting emails from people for the next week saying, hey, you left this in your cart. You might want to come and have a chat to us and come back and see if you want to buy it. So in that case, in the lower intent of the funnel, you want to be able to get an ad out to people who are in that position where they might have left something in the cart. So that's a really high intent. We know that they are really, really likely to want to buy that because they've already added it to cart. And then at the final conversion point, somebody who actually completed and purchased and they see a confirmation of that, perhaps going to a thank you page that you might throw up at the end. If we've got the visibility of that, then they're the kind of people who you can go, well, number one, I can retarget that person with another ad in the next 14 days to buy something new. Or the really smart thing to do is develop that lookalike audience based on that kind of person that is likely to do things like buying things that you sell and getting them to know who your business is for the first time. So setting up pixel events will allow you to capture that intent at every stage of the pathway towards purchasing from you. And it helps you to tailor a lot of your messaging to really move people along through that funnel. So I know I'm talking about funnels a lot here this morning. If you don't really understand them, just think of it as at the top of the funnel, people are not particularly aware of you or your product. They're discovering you for the first time. At the middle of the funnel, they are aware of you. They know who you are. They may even be very interested in what it is you sell, but they're not quite ready to buy yet. They're still sort of shopping around and exploring their options. And at the bottom of the funnel, that's when they really, really have a strong likelihood to be buying from you, but they just haven't completed the purchase yet. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense. Now, with what comes to insights with the pixel, you can pick up a lot of information about how your customers are behaving on your website. And this is pretty important too. You can find these conversion metrics at pretty much any level of your campaign. So the campaign level, the ad set level, or at the ad level. So for products and services, for instance, conversion metrics can include things like the number of sales you've made. It can include the appointments you might've scheduled, the lead forms that have been generated and filled in, subscriptions and signups. Now with lead forms, that lead form is all about the internal Facebook lead generation ads that show those kind of leads. And it's got its own little, um, excuse me, internal CRM within Facebook that allows you to track the, the progress of those leads as well. But that's, for, that's another webinar for another time. For now though, we'll just look at these particular kinds of metrics that can be measured in the insights of your ads in the ads manager. And that's important to know, this is not on your page insights, this is in your ads insights. So you can view this through either business suite, if you know where that is and, you know, and you've been using it, or just through your ads manager, which you can access through facebook.com forward slash ads manager, and it'll go into your one. So now you know what the pixel basically is and, and how it works. It's time to learn how you actually roll out the pixel to your website and how you make this thing work. Now, hopefully 
Most of you have done this already, but it's always good to have an overview just to make sure it's just been in there. Um, great question from Tamara that's popped up. Aren't Facebook scrapping business suite or something to do with insight levels? Um, insights are fine. Business suite's fine. I think you're talking about Facebook analytics, which is a product that most of us didn't even know existed. Um, and that's the reason why they're getting rid of it because no one uses it. They didn't know it existed. So it's pretty much like a, a different view of looking at your insights. And it was accessible through business suite, but your page insights, your ads insights and business suite are not changing at all in fact business suite is actually getting more upgrades so it's definitely going to be something that's going to be around for quite a while i know we all get a little bit tired of the changes sometimes but often in the business area the changes are made for very positive reasons and often in reply to a lot of national concerns about privacy so in that case your insights are fine it's just facebook analytics that's going away so we're going to go through each step of the Facebook Pixels implementation across more detail. But as an overview, well, first of all, you need to generate the Facebook Pixel codes in the Ads Manager. So that gets each ad account gets one pixel code. So if you've got an ad account, you might like in my case, I've got about 70 different ad accounts because I do lots of different work with lots of different other people. But in your case, if you're only running your one business and it's got the one ad account, then that ad account gets one pixel code. Then what you do, you take that pixel code and you add it to your website site. So that's then saying, okay, it's in place now. It's now able, when it fires off in some way, able to produce some data that comes back. Then you're gonna add events. Now I'm not talking about events as in workshops and webinars. I'm talking about the things that track specific actions that people take on your website that we just talked about some of them. In fact, like, so if someone visits a product details page, or they go through to add to cart or they make a purchase and go to that thank you page about that. So then finally then we go from those events to verifying that the pixel is actually working. Um, it's no good to us if uh, there's a pixel in place and, and, the, and the world can't see it. So you wanna make sure that those events or those little actions that are happening on your website are actually firing back to Facebook so that you can get those pieces of information back in your ad insights and your page insights. So the first step to creating a pixel in the ads manager is to do it from your Facebook ad account to get started, log into your ads manager. So that's um, where you go to facebook.com forward slash ads manager, and then click on the business tools icon up on the left. So that's the, uh, the little, um, uh, the, the dots, the nine dots. I, I don't know why, I don't know what to call it. I know the lines, we call it like a hamburger menu, but this one's like the dots menu, I suppose. Now from there, you're gonna select a thing called Events Manager. So when it opens up the shortcuts, you'll see Ads Manager is in there and a lot of other things. You'll even see in some cases, Business Suite, there you go at the bottom of the menu. But otherwise, Events Manager is the one you wanna see. This is where we're going to set up what those actions are that the pixel's going to track. So once we get in there, we create, um, we, we, we get into managing this pixel and creating it. So to get started, you've already done that. You've logged into your Ads Manager account. You've clicked on your business tools. You've gone there and selected the events manager. Now what we're gonna do is from the Facebook pixels data sources page. Wow, what a name that is. <laughs> Click the select web and then get started. Then you'll be prompted to enter a name for your pixel. So you can only have one pixel per ad account, like I said before. So choose a name that really represents your business. So if your business's name is Nutrient Water, call it the Nutrient Water Pixel. Um, it's going to be about, um, the, the pixel's going to be matched to a business, not to a property. So for instance, if you've got um, two different websites, an app, and maybe a MailChimp account, and you want to be able to view, uh, to have the pixel fire off on actions within your Ma MailChimp account, within your app, and within your two different websites that are all got to do with saying nutrient water. Then I'm only saying that because I've got a nutrient water here on my desk. <laughs> that just prompted me to say it. And then you're able to then say, okay, all these pixel actions are related to this, no matter what the property is that each of those are on. So whether that action happens on this website, that website, the app, or MailChimp, I'm able to then measure that back to the success of these things. So what you would do, for instance, if you had a second website that was not related to to nutrient water, it was something else completely different, like maybe um, buying mobile phone accessories, 
then you wouldn't naturally have the pixel in there. You'd have to set up another ad account that allows you to set up then a separate pixel for that separate product or that separate line of business. So just make sure that your pixel is sort of generally about one line of business. Now for all, most of all you, that's gonna be no problem because that's exactly what you're working with is just the one business and it keeps things, I guess a little bit, um, a little bit less complicated. So the second step we're gonna take now is to implement it. Now there's two ways to implement the pixel. The first way is the easy way through what we call partner integration. So if you're using one of the e-commerce partners or a website partner on your website, you can set up the pixel without entering any kind of code. Let's just say, for instance, you're using WooCommerce on WordPress, then there is a partner integration for WooCommerce in WordPress. If you're using Squarespace websites, Wix websites, Shopify, big commerce any of these kind of platforms that are very common magento is another one then you're able to then have a partner integration that works with them all now that partner integration in the case of wordpress actually builds a custom um wordpress plugin for facebook that then will download that you can then install as a plugin on there in the case of wix squarespace uh, shopify it will give you instructions of how to do it and a code to enter into a particular place within your admin screen for those different kinds of websites. If you've got a website that runs Joomla or any of those other um, smaller systems, um, there's plenty and like, there's tons of them. There's tons of integrations that work with all those too. And if all else fails, then you can do what well, the other way through is a manual setup. And that's where you, if you are the owner of your website and you control everything on it, or your web developer, can help you to implement that pixel directly into your website. So they may need to put it into the, the header of your theme or your template or something like that to make sure that the pixel is accessible on all the pages that needs to be within your website. So manual setup for me is probably the easiest way to do it because I have control over my websites. But I'm really working with a client's website I may not have full permissions to do things like adding code to their website. So at least I can send them off a partner integration, which will help to make that job a little bit easier for them, or at least as easy as possible with their web developer. Now, what we're gonna do is continue to implement that pixel by choosing how we'd like to implement it in the events manager. So let's just dive into these two little things first for the manually adding the pixel or using the partner integration. This is kind of like what the code looks like. Now this is taking that manual code and adding it into the website. So don't copy this actual code because that's not your code. That's a code for a fictional Facebook property. Now, if you or your developer were adding it manually, you want to put that pixel base code in what is called the website header. So, and that's usually what it looks like when it's put in there. So this is um, invisible on your website, but it is visible to um, browsers and different um, you know, places that will read that. So Facebook is scanning your website to go, oh yeah, I can see the pixel code that has been implemented correctly. Now your website's original code looks a little bit like this. When you paste in the Facebook pixel code between the head and the end head tags of the web page. So see head is at the top, end head with the slash in front of it. That's just like saying at the end of the head. Um, once you put it in there, you may already have some existing code in there. So a lot of people have got Google Analytics code, for instance, or they might have some LinkedIn ads code in there or all sorts of different other measurement software and different things that they need to add to the header that are tags that get read by third party companies that aren't your company. So you just place the pixel code underneath whatever is already in there, um, but above that end head tag. If you don't know what I'm talking about here and this is complete double dutch to you, don't worry. This is the hardest way to do it. The uh, easiest way is to do it through the partner integrations. So in this case here, for instance, the pixel ID that's in here is, uh, it's gonna be different to that one that's on there. We've just got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Yours will be a different code to that. Now the pixel then is gonna track quite a few different events. Now the standard events are Facebook recognizing that it supports across all the different ad products, something like complete registration or search or add to wish list. They might be things like that. Now you can use events to measure and optimize for things like conversions and to build different audiences that you want to then use for other ad campaigns within Facebook. 
So all to do that, to track those specific things, you then need to add those into the, into the appropriate code in your website. So if you're a standard event you'd like to manage in your page and you want to do it manually like this, you can do this. So this one's an add to cart one. So what it's doing is saying on this specific page, I want to track add to cart and I'm going to put it in the code of this individual page. So whilst the header may be showing us what the overall Facebook code is that's going to be fired off, the specific action that you want to track here is going to be this other one, this, this script FBQ add to cart script. So that is the hard way of doing it. This is the manual way of doing it. I do not expect you to know how to do this. Um, I don't even do this myself, even though I know how to, it's not something I need to do myself. So you'll place it in with your Facebook pixel code above the end script tag that's within the Facebook pixel code. If you want to track just that one particular thing. So you paste a standard event code that's relevant to that specific page. And then you do this through every single page individually that you want to track. If you've got specific things you want to track in that page, like I said, this is the hard way of doing it. This is not the way you're going to want to do it. If you're running on a very common platform, say for instance, like um, a supported platform like Wix, WordPress, WooCommerce, Shopify, BigCommerce, Magento, Joomla, many, many, many other kind of ones as well. Well, then in that case, it's going to be, well, we're not going to look at it the same way. We're going to look at this as something that this partner integration can do all the hard, heavy lifting for us. So the check to see if your platform's supported, you can get directions for like setting up your pixel, go to that events manager. So the same place we were going into before we hit all that code stuff and click to select partner integrations instead of manual. Then you click, you can select the platform you would like to use. So you can see a whole bunch of them in there on screen from 3D cart through the Magento, through to WooCommerce, Ticketmaster, Joomla, Kajabi, whatever you happen to be using for your particular e-commerce website. And it also plugs into certain CRMs or customer relationship management systems. So you've got Kajabi in there, which is great for tracking sort of things that you want to track in your marketing and within your um, within your, um, your 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 customer relationship management flow. So if you wanted to know who are the people that are doing certain things in there, this can communicate back to your CRM what they're doing. Uh, and you can put in things like things like tag management. So that's uh, that's things like um, Google's tag manager. If you're using that, if you're using Google's data studio to connect through lots and lots of different things, or even if you want to connect it through to a specific CRM that you're using, say agile CRM or something like that, then you can do that as well. HubSpot is a natural integration in there too. So after you set up your Facebook pixel base code in your site, you can use the event setup tool to then set up those standard events without the need to code. So all those standard things like add to cart and view page and all that sort of really normal stuff you're gonna visit, you don't need to do that now. The, the partner integration does that for you, but you can still use the event setup tool to set up those standard events. And you can also set up value and currency parameters. That means that you wanna say, if someone lands on this page and adds to cart, that to me is worth five bucks. If they go through and actually make the purchase, that is then worth 27 bucks. And you can set those parameters for the purchase and the initiating checkout events so that you can then measure back to all your insights and to your CRMs and all that. And this is technical stuff. So I don't, don't, don't hit me if you, if you get a little bit lost in this one, because it is not easy to understand if you're not used to tracking codes and tracking things through their final destinations and reporting back on sales. So if you want to do this kind of stuff, go into your events manager and copy and paste that base code like we were doing before into your website or use the partner manager and then select if you want automatic or match or if you want to turn on select, sorry, if you want to turn on automatic advanced matching, I say always turn on automatic advanced matching, then open the event setup tool. Now in here, you're going to follow the rest of the flow to create that event. So that's when we're going to be going, okay, flowing through what's the email what's the what's the website address we're going to go to what's the name of the pixel we're going to have great that's all in there let's now start to measure that now the events manager is a tool that lets us 
set up these events. I hate the word events because events to me are workshops and webinars. So I want to say actions. So it's set up the events manager sets up the actions and the custom conversions on your website. So what you want to do is verify that events are correctly set up, which is great. So there's actions we know that they are correctly set up and can be measured. And then you want to be able to monitor those actions as well. And then diagnose and troubleshoot any issues because um, you wouldn't be the first person to come into this whole events manager and, and conversions measuring and API stuff and go, you know what, I'm really struggling with this. I don't seem to be able to get it through to where it's supposed to be going. What am I doing wrong? So this will allow you to sort of diagnose when things are not correctly sent through to your, to your, um, to your, to your Facebook ads manager. So what are events? So events are actions, just like I've been saying, that occur on your website. Like when someone makes a purchase, that's an obvious action. That's probably the best action you want. That's when you know the money's in the bank. The standard event code, it, what's, it, it actually enables you to attract these actions. So when you do that partner integration, you use the WordPress one, the WooCommerce one, the Squarespace one, the, the Wix one, the Shopify, the Big Commerce, the Magento one, then all that's included. So it enables you to track these. So once you've implemented the pixels base code or use the partner integration, any of those standard events you want to attract, uh, you can reach them with the most relevant messages. So for example, if people added items to their cart, you can then have an ad campaign that retargets those people and encourage them to then buy the items before say they're sold out. So if they put it in the cart, it's been sitting in the cart for more than 15 minutes, you can deliver an ad to that person if they're on Facebook to actually say, hey, you've, you've nearly completed your purchase. If you do it right now, um, you'll, you'll get that product before, it, um, before it's sold out. Or if you get it in now right now, it'll be shipped to you tomorrow. So that kind of stuff gives them an incentive to go back and complete that purchase for you. And you can change the ad creative and the message for people who've already started that checkout process. So whilst your normal ad might be encouraging people to buy from you, this new ad is very, very highly specific and may only go to two people a day. But if you've got enough people coming through your e-commerce site, that could be a ton of people. And well, you know how much your products and your services cost. So you know that, well, if I get a reminder out there, it may cost me 30 cents to reach that person on Facebook. If they're going to spend two and a half thousand dollars, that will be the best 30 cents extra I've ever spent in my life to reach that person. So if you change that kind of ad creative and that kind of message that encourages people to move on to the next step, it's just going to make it so much more likely they will actually take that next step. And you can motivate them to complete that purchase with a discount even. You can throw in like a buy it now and get 10% off, that kind of thing. A lot of people deliberately leave things in and the add to cart stage because they know that there's likely going to be an ad or an email that's going to come through and encourage them to buy with a 10% discount. So you can also use this information to then optimize your website. For example, you can see where people are falling off. If they're falling off at the add to cart stage and not even adding it to cart, what is it about that page that's making people not actually want to buy it? Is the page loading too slow? Is the page loading with a great big honking pop-up that's saying, sign up to my newsletter? And, and it's like turning people off because they're just being annoyed to death by that stupid pop-up. Honestly, if you've got those pop-ups on your site, get rid of them. They are so annoying. I actually go away from websites and, and with anger when they're trying to constantly badger me to sign up for their newsletter. Um, so you can use this information. So I really, really find out where are the points of weakness on your website. So if there's a particular um, page you've got where people just don't seem to be buying that product, maybe the description's too long or too short. The photos are not great or they're really, really big photos that are taking way too long to load. All these things are possibilities, of course. So you should start with the standard events. So these are all the, the new ones, like the, the, the normal stuff, viewing the content, searching, adding the cart, adding to the wish list if you've got one, initiating a checkout, adding payment, um, a purchase value, whatever the purchase happens to be, or generating a lead or something like that. But then you've got what we call custom events if you need to make them. So the example on screen is those standard events are right down the bottom until you get to custom event at the very bottom which is showing that there's a particular thing that they want to track that is not the normal thing that's being tracked through the standard events. So once you've got all that in place, <laughs> that's a big call and that's a big ask to have it all there ready to go and all there in the right place where it needs to be. 
you now need to check your pixel setup to make sure the thing is working. And the Facebook Pixel Helper is a troubleshooting tool that helps you, all your website developers, depending on who's putting in that code for you, uh, to find out if the pixel's working right. So once you install the Chrome plugin, so if you're using Google Chrome, which you probably should be if you're doing this kind of e-commerce stuff, because it's just got a lot more features in it than Safari or you know, uh, Microsoft Edge or what's the other one that people use? Firefox, for instance. Chrome is the best one when you're actually managing websites because it's got tools in there that allow you to diagnose things more, like, for instance, this Pixel Helper. So once you install the Chrome Pixel Helper plugin, so you might need to like Google that and say um, Pixel Helper plugin and you'll see where it is and you can install it as a plugin to your website. Now for me, this particular plugin is a godsend because it allows me to then verify things as I'm going and then measure things later on. So I've got Pixel Helpers, I've got Google Analytics viewers that actually let me see that whether there is a, a, a pixel or a Google Analytics code that's sitting on a site that I'm currently on, as well as my own sites to make sure they actually are firing off. So I go and do my weekly check of every website I manage. If I can see that that's no longer working, I can see there's a problem and go and fix it straight away. So it allows you to check for errors. It allows you to understand the data that's coming from the pixel as well. So in this example on screen, it's showing us that it's reading a page view. So that's the only thing that so far has fired off on this is that it's reading a page view. So we know that that's doing it. It loaded in 40.98 milliseconds, which is very, very fast. And it says, yes, the pixel code is actually here and it's working and it measured this particular page view. The diagnostics tab in Events Manager it lists issues preventing you from sending accurate data. So it's saying there's gonna be some issues in here. It's gonna say, these are the things that are stopping us from getting accurate data that you can use in your lookalike campaigns and your custom audience campaigns with the Facebook Ads Manager. It can help you improve the quality of the data by alerting you when those custom events you've set up are close to standard events that Facebook's already using. So it's saying, look, you've set up this custom event but you can just use a standard event for this. You're probably double measuring and that's going to kind of mess with your ads, your ads figures. So it'll help you to nut those out and get rid of them if they're too close or any other sort of errors there are. There might be even sort of things like, um, you know, saying that this is targeting the same thing that this particular, um, our standard events are targeting. Uh, it's messing with your measurements and messing with your insights. You may want to change that. So thankfully, most of you won't get any errors showing in there. But sometimes you may see that in there. So a few best practices when it comes to using your pixel um, and making it work harder for you. I think we want to make this thing you know, chug along and work really hard to get the most amount of information and value out of it that it possibly can for you. So the first thing to do is to select an ad objective for your campaign that aligns with what you want to achieve in your business. So when you select that right ad objective, you're gonna help the ad delivery system to get your ads to the people most likely to take a desired action and ensure that your campaign creates the most value for your business or your client. So in this case of B, if you're looking to measure stuff with the pixel, brand awareness and reach in the ads manager are not pixel measurable things, right? Reach can be part of it, but generally reach is just something we can actually, you know, be able to reach, we can read that within Facebook because reach is how many people saw this ad in Facebook or Instagram or Messenger or WhatsApp. Same with brand awareness. We can reach those things within the Facebook platforms. The consideration section there, traffic and engagement and all that, traffic is going to your website. That could be really important. You might say, well, we can tell when people clicked on that link to go to your website, but can we also see if they actually viewed the stuff on that website. When they got there, they actually viewed your landing page. So there's different optimizations in here. They can say, yes, I'm looking for the click or yes, I'm looking for the landing page view. Very, very subtle difference with very big repercussions with how successful your ads campaigns can be. Because this is when people say, oh, I did this thing to send people to my website and I measured it by clicks through the website and I've got no sales. I spent a thousand dollars, got no sales at all. The problem with that is that they probably did not know that they should have set the optimization for that traffic campaign to be landing page views. 
And the reason why they don't like landing page views is because it says there's going to be less people are going to be, be able to be measured with it. So I'll give you the estimation over on the right. The thousand bucks it might give you 59 to 75 potential clicks a day, but it might only show you 12 to 24 individual landing page views. Trust me, you want the landing page views because those people have a greater intent to do something with your stuff rather than people who are just chronic clickers. Chronic clickers are people who just click on anything, they have a quick browse and they move on, they won't do anything with you. They're kind of like the, what we used to call tire kickers in car yards. They're just going in there to kick the tires and say, yeah, nice looking car, mate. No, no intention of buying it, but yeah, nice looking car. And they just do this on the weekend because they like cars. They're never going to buy it. And so they're a very low quality person to have in your corner to be buying anything from you. The stuff you want to set to is things like conversions. That's the stuff where the Facebook pixel shines the brightest. So if you want to measure an objective and get that objective for you, your objective being conversions, sales, in other words, people actually buying your stuff, booking the stuff through you, then you will need to select an ad objective when you're setting up your ads so that actually matches what it is you want to achieve. Now, when you select the right ad objective, you are helping the ad delivery system get your ads to the people who are most likely to take the action you want them to take. And it lets the, it just makes sure that the campaign creates the most value. So when you say um, the desired action, we want them to buy, great. So you've got to do an ad type that's going to track that. A brand awareness reach traffic or engagement campaign is not going to do that. But a conversions campaign or a catalog sales campaign has a much greater likelihood of you being able to guarantee that people are going to at least get through to your landing page, see your product and hopefully buy it. Well, then that's not going to come from just general traffic engagement, brand awareness and reach campaigns because it's not being told to measure that conversion event. Hopefully that makes sense for you. It's a lot of stuff to take in this morning, I know. So if you're adding standard event code in your website yourself, you need to make sure it's written. This is where you're doing the, the writing out that, that, that code that you want to track. You've got to write it exactly as given. So it can't be, you know, changed in any sort of way. So if it's going to say, for instance, if it's provided to you with upper, upper case view content, you also have to put uppercase view content. Otherwise it's just trying to measure something that doesn't exist back at Facebook. So if you absolutely add, you know, the track of view content in lowercase to one of your product pages instead, then the, the standard event of view content with the capitals, which is what you're expecting to see, is going to show nothing. But this custom event called view content with lowercase is the one that's going to show. And you're going to, well, what's that? What's this other thing that's not matching with all my other campaigns where I've got the view content? And you won't see that in your insights. You'll just see there's a thing called view content and a thing called view content. You may not notice that one's got uppercase and one's got lowercase. So just make sure you're copying across if you're doing that code action yourself in exactly the way it needs to be done. Otherwise, that will not get tracked really well at all. Now for the purchase standard event, so if someone's actually gone through and made a purchase for you, you can log the value and the currency to better reflect your conversion. So the value, $9.99 or 9 euros, 99 euro cents, and then what the currency is you're working with. So in our case, it might be $29.95 in a currency of AUD or Australian dollar. So that better helps you to align out how, like, what, what are the things that, what is the cost um, that you, what was the value that you get out of purchase for that particular product? So this is when you want to get really, really down deep. Let's just say you've got 30 different products on your website and you've got 30 different values for those different products. One's $29.95, another one's $59.95, another one's $27.93. You know, you get the message. Then you want to have this kind of, tracking of the purchase in there as a very special thing tracked on that specific page. This is a lot of setup, I know, but what it does allow you to do is to go, I'm not just going in there and tracking people going to my website. I'm also starting to track so much more than this. Starting to track, for instance, that, um, that, that you can go through and see how much I made from that click. I made $29.95 from that purchase. You can also track 
um, values against other things. So for instance, in Google Analytics, you can do this as well. You can say, well, for everyone who lands on my landing page uh, without, buy without buying um, any kind of um, product from it, I can say, well, that to me is worth um, 37 cents. Now, I don't know why that would be worth 37 cents, but you might say, actually, it's part of that lifetime value of that client where I feel like it's if it's costing me $1.50 to get some on my website, and then that page, that landing page view is worth $30 to me because I know that that person will go on to buy something that's far greater than $30. That may make some sort of sense to you. Now, this is the kind of stuff that very highly advanced forensic accounting likes to take care of. They like to attach not only a cost to everything, but a value to everything. So they will say, well, okay, you're doing these Facebook ad campaigns, but um, now we're at the point where we need to measure, you know, what is that worth to you? So if someone, if, you, if you're gonna spend $300,000 on Google ads, on Facebook ads this, this, this winter, well, then we wanna know what is each one of those clicks over here? What's that actually worth? What's click worth to you? And you go, well, nothing, because they haven't bought anything. And they ah, oh, well, when does it become worth something? Oh, it becomes worth something when someone converts. Great. So how are we measuring that? Where's the conversion? We've got some sort of um, some sort of spreadsheet that shows you when people are converting, what that's worth. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've got that. We know that that particular click uh, leads to a, a, a conversion but that's then worth 30 bucks. Great. That goes in there. For you, most likely as a small business, you're not going to go to this kind of detail unless it's for a purchase like the one shown on the screen. We've got the value at $9.99 and the currency at Euro or AUD for Australian dollar. So you can then measure the specific value that came back from that specific purchase. So you can go, if that particular purchase was worth 9.99 to me, but it cost me only two cents for that person to get to that purchase in the ads, I've made a great tidy profit on that. But if it cost me $32 to get someone to click on buy and actually complete the purchase of that 9.99 product, I'm doing something really, really wrong. Another tip is to try using standard events before you create custom events. I think I kind of hinted this before. When you use the events that are most relevant to your business, start with three to five of these standard events and then sort of iterate it around from there. So you can go, okay, I'm going to test it out and saying viewing content is something I want to know. I want to know people are going to my website and viewing that page. Awesome. Do I want to be able to track whether people are doing a search on my site because it's a search box there? That's not important to me. No, I don't really care. Or it might be that you go, oh, actually, I, might, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind knowing what that is. You just can't track what they searched for. All you can do is track that they did a search. Um, that might be useful in things like e-commerce where you go, well, I've only got two kinds of product in there. So they're searching for one or the other. Um, adding to cart might be a very important one. If you're seeing that there's 58 add to cart, but no purchases being measured, then you go, what is happening on my website that's causing people not to finish that transaction? Are they hitting a ship? And this is usually what it is. It's the shipping costs because you've got to have to go past add to cart and proceed to check out, put in your details, and then it calculates the shipping in a lot of cases. So what you'll find is if it's a $9.99 product where the shipping is $38.95, then they go, now I'm not buying that. That's now too expensive. That's like now starting to push up against 50 bucks. Um, adding to wish list might be an important thing for you to be able to measure. So you might go, you know, get based on the fact that 80% of people who have something on their wish list go on to spend $20 on my website, I can go that adding the wish list is worth to me five of that $20 depends on how you like to measure things. Initiating checkout, adding payment info in can be something you can measure. The purchase, the lead can all be measured. Your custom events, in most cases, you're not gonna have to add any. You can just use the ones that are already there in the standard events. But custom events are there if you need them for very complex sites with very complex things that need to be measured. And especially you've got a lot of, um, I guess, uh, board members and managers that like to get endless reports out of you. Hopefully none of you are in that position. Oh my God, it'd be horrible. So a few key takeaways before we end our session today. Let's have a little bit of a look at what we learned. Use the pixel to measure your conversions to optimize your ads for the people most likely to take action. 
and generate more relevant audiences. That's the main thing it's about. It's just really allowing you to make better decisions about the ads you're doing and then be able to generate audiences of people who have taken actions on your website before and being able to retarget them. That's the main thing we use the pixel for, retargeting people who have done things on our website. Um, you can then add the pixel to your website to access additional advertising features. So that's things like creating new custom audiences based upon someone who visited your website. You can say, I wanna do a campaign that specifically retargets people who went to this one page on my website that's all about buying nutrient water, right? The particular flavor I'm having, the blackberry goji berry flavor. So we wanna see people who are into that and send them an ad for some goji berries that we sell from our health food store. That could be a really good way to use the pixel. But then the other one was the lookalike audience. Remember that one? That one was all about you finding more people just like the most valuable people that you've got in your particular customer base. The people who've already taken actions, people who've already done things on your website and made, especially the people who already made purchases. So make sure you get on there so you can get access to those features. Then you can set up the pixel in the events manager and just make sure it's working. And if you get really stuck with that, you can get onto some help within the Boost with Facebook Australia group. There's people in there ready to help you. Or if you're running ads already before, in the last five days you run some ads or you've got some ads act active right now, there's a chat window that can open up. You can get help from a Facebook person who can actually help you straight away to set that stuff up correctly. And start with just the standard events the ones that are included in the pixel measurements, because you don't really need to do a lot of custom events unless it's a really important thing that you need to measure. But in most cases, and I'd say 98% of cases, the standard events that you can measure are all there and all ready to go. So you can ask some questions here if you like, or if you'd rather sort of have a bit of a think and a bit of a play with this, you can also um, come back to the uh, to the the YouTube version of this that's gonna be posted in the next couple of hours at Business Station's YouTube channel or at my own YouTube channel, which is at Dante St. James. So my name, basically, just type it in the YouTube, you'll find my channel. I've got a couple of hundred um, different videos in there. This one will be up there as well for you to be able to look at. The idea is there for you to have a go and if you get stuck, reach out or go to the Boost with Facebook Australia group. I'm one of the um, administrators in there that helps people out as well as Connor and the team from Facebook who also get in there and try to help out as well as much as they possibly can. And aside from them, there's tons of other local businesses just like you who are there ready to jump in and give a hand as well. We've got a remarkably vibrant network in there that's really gonna jump in and help you out where they can. It's um, really good to be in there. You can get some great tips as well. So if you've got no further questions to go and there's none popping up just now, have a go, have a play. And if you wanna reach out to me at any point or book me for a one-to-one -one through the ASBAS Digital Solutions Program. Um, if you've never had a one-to-one -one with the program before, it, the first one's free, great, we like free, or 44 for the second or 66 for any after that. Um, the ASBAS program has also been extended beyond June 30 to um, at least September 30 this year, but we're looking at possibly until the end of next year as well, but it may change slightly. So up until September 30 this year, you can use that uh, to your advantage. Um, and also reach out to me through my email address, dante.treaty.com.au or stalk me on my Facebook page, fb.com, and then I am Dante St. James. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed this or at least got some value out of it. I know that it can be a very dry topic, the Facebook pixel, because let's face it, it's one of those techie egghead things that just doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. But if you wanna track what's going on and then be able to retarget your ads to the most valuable possible people who are in that funnel towards you, then this is the way to do it. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend. And uh, for some parts of Australia, a long weekend as well. I am an idiot. I'm going on a trip to Queensland on Monday, so I miss out on the, my local public holiday here on Monday. But hey, you know what? I get to go to Queensland. That can't be a bad thing at all. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.